Hey, this is Eran Stern, and today I'm going to break the After Effects tutorial record by doing a five-part lesson about duplicating elements inside After Effects. I'll cover five different methods for cloning and repeating elements, so by the end of this massive tutorials, you'll be able to use the Puppet tool, the CC Repertile effect, some clone brushes, and even a third-party plugin from Trapcode to do more of the same thing. I'll promise you that you'll have a variety of options to choose from. So let's just jump start now with the famous repeater effect of the shape tool. So the first thing I want to do is just introduce you to a couple of layers that I already placed in this timeline called more of the same thing. The background layer named Starry Starry Night is a PSD file, a Photoshop file, which I've created very easily using the fractal noise effect and a few of stars. And this will serve us as the sky for our background. On top of this, there's the cityscape, which is a building of a city you might know. And on top of them, there is the digital ocean. So let me just generate a quick RAM preview. And if you want to see more about creating a digital ocean, I can recommend my DVD, which include a lesson which I'll demonstrate exactly how I did it. But this is a rendered file, which you see here. So we will build on top of this background our elements. The first element that I want to add to our scene will be an arc of stars that falls from the sky. And in order to do so, we will use the shape tool, the star tool. So make sure nothing is selected over here and create yourself a tiny star, something like this. Now let's make sure we will select the star in the timeline and go under the add menu and add a repeater. This repeater will repeat these stars, but we will change and modify the parameters of the repeater, the transform, and the transform of the whole layer. So we've got a couple of things to do. First, let me change the color here. So by pressing the fill color over here, I can choose to my star something which is a little bit more of a yellow tint, a bright yellow tint for it. And I will say OK to this. Now let's drill down the repeater one and we will change the copies from 3 to 15 so we'll have a lot of copies to work with now let's pan down to the transform of the repeater and you have to make sure that you choose the right one because we've got here also the transform for the polystar itself and the transform for the whole layer and we will change each one of them so first let me choose the transform of the repeater and just drill it down now we will change the parameters for the scale. First we will write down 65%. So this will take each duplicate of the star and will make it smaller 65% for each one of the duplicates. Now we can also change the rotation to maybe 20 degrees. So they will also have a nice rotation movement. Now let's change the position of the repeater and I will just make sure that they will be a little bit more tighter by changing the X value to maybe 30. And I also want to change the repeater of the Y axis that they will come from above. So maybe minus 30 in this case. In order to create the arc shape, I will change the anchor point. So all the properties of the repeater will change its value according to my new anchor point. And you have to drag it until you see fit. And I think that in my case, I will just type down minus 400 to the X. And for the Y anchor point, you have to play with it and see what fits. This is basically the animation that I'm after. And remember that once we will change the offset of the repeater, we will have our animation. So soon enough we will do it. But before doing so, let's change a couple of the settings below. So let's open now the transform of the polystar itself. We can actually close the transform of the repeater because we are done with it. Open the transform of the polystar itself 
and I will change the scale of the stars so each star will be a little bit bigger and this will make our arc do a better animation I think also you can change other properties but I will leave them as is I will close the transform of the polystar I will open out the transform of the whole layer so this is the mega transform if you want to call it this will transform everything after we transform the repeater and after we transform the polystar so what I want to do here is only change one value and I will deselect the proportional of the scale and just place here a minus sign before the X so the whole animation will flip on the horizontal axis which will give me exactly what I want and maybe you can also change the position of the whole layer so you will get something which represent better exactly what you want and I think that this will work very well. Now you can close this transform, you can go up and we will only record a keyframe animation in the repeater offset values. So I will seek for the first frame which we will not see anything on the screen and in my case the value is 8. I will record the keyframe at my first frame on the timeline I will go to the end of the timeline by pressing end on my keyboard and I will change the values here so this star will fill the screen and I think in my case the end frame will be minus 20. If we will go to the first frame and create a RAM preview you will see that now we have an arc of stars that fall from the sky. The only thing that missing here is Let's just go up, close the whole layer. We can also rename this layer stars so you know what it is and just make sure to enable motion blur to this shape layer and enable motion blur to the whole comp. Let's go to the first frame, hover on top of our composition, change the dimension to fit up to 100% and create a final round preview to the first stage and you can see our beautiful arc of stars falling from the sky with a nice motion blur to it. So this is the first thing that we are repeating with the help of the repeater and the shape tools. So you can close your eyes, wish upon a star, and I really hope that until next time we'll meet, all your wishes will be granted. This is Eran Stern for CreativeCow.net saying goodbye.